So, here we go. Next unit. Thought I would start off with a little joke about homecoming. So enjoy this picture. Before we start solving systems of equations, we need to know what a system is and what solving consists of. So, solving a system, what a system is, is just a collection of functions put together on the same graph. If we want to solve a system, we're looking for where those functions all intersect. So we could have a system of three lines, and this would be the solution. We could have a parabola, a line, and another parabola, and this would be the solution. So we're just looking at where these graphs intersect. We'll start with lines. So remember, we could have lines intersect in, two, in one point. We could have lines never intersect. And we could also have lines intersect everywhere. They could be the same line. So this would be one solution. This would be no solutions. And this would be infinitely many solutions. So if we were to look at these two graphs, the first one is obvious. The, the y-intercept is negative 1. My slope is th rise 3 over 1. Down 3, back 1. The second one I would have to solve for y, so I'm going to subtract 2x. I'm going to get y equals negative 2x plus 4. So I'm going to graph that one. Minus 2x. And the solution to this system would be this point right here, which is 1, 2. And what that means is that is the point that is on both graphs. If I plug in this x and this y to both of my other equations, then they should both if I plug in 1 here, it should give me 2. If I plug in 1 and 2 here, it should give me 4. The first thing I'd like you to do is to make sure that this is the same exact system as the first example, so this needs to be a subtraction. We're going to look at substitution. There are three ways to, to solve. I can either graph the system and solve, substitution and solve, or elimination and solve. And now we're going to use the same functions as the before example, but I'm going to do substitution. The answer shouldn't change because I'm still solving where they intersect. So when I have a variable by itself, y and 3x minus 1 are equal. So I can substitute that in for the y. Typically you substitute in with parentheses. There's a 1 outside this, so that's why I didn't need to do parentheses here, because if I distribute 1, nothing changes. I'm going to combine like terms and add the 1, and divide by 5. So I get x equals 1. I'm now going to take this 1, because remember, my answer is going to be an ordered pair, and I know x is 1. I'm going to take this 1 and I'm going to plug it into this equation where it says y equals 3 times the x minus 1. And that gives me 2. Now let's look at elimination. Okay, elimination, you must have the x and the y on the same side. Okay, so now what I'm curious about is did you just pause the camera and put in your notes elimination x and y must be on the same side. So the first thing I'm going to do to this equation here is I'm going to subtract the 3x to the other side. And this equation will become negative 3x plus y equals negative 1. The second equation I'm going to keep the same for now. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at whether or not I can eliminate a variable. Because if I can eliminate a variable then I can solve for the other variable. So I look at this, positive 1, positive 1, y, negative 3, positive 2. If I add these together, neither of them eliminate. 
But if I were to multiply this whole bottom row by a negative 1, this bottom row would become negative 2x minus y equals negative 4. I'm going to keep that top row just like it is. And if you look, the y's now eliminate. If I add the rows together, then I get negative 5x equals negative 5 divide by negative 5, x equals 1. Now, again, I can now take this 1 and subs it into here, and I get 3 times 1 minus 1 is going to give me 2, the exact answer I'm supposed to get. So here's a different system, and I'm looking at this system and I'm saying, do I want to solve for y and graph it? No. Because don't forget, when I solve for y, I'm going to end up dividing by a negative 2, and I'm going to end up with a whole bunch of fractions. So I don't want to solve for y. Do I want to substitute? Well, in substitution, I need to get a variable by itself, x or y, it doesn't matter. But no matter what, if I look at all these variables, they all have a coefficient in front, which means if I need to solve for this x, I'm going to have to end up dividing by negative 3. It's not going to be pretty. So when you have a whole bunch of numbers and everything's really pretty lined up, you're going to use elimination. So I look at my x's. I can't eliminate them yet, but I could force them by multiplication to be both 15 and negative 15. I look at this column. I see that I can force these both to be, I could do negative 8 and 8, but I could also just force this to be a negative 4, and the positive 4 would automatically cancel. So I'm going to multiply this by a negative 2. No, I'm going to multiply this by a positive 2. And I'm going to get 10x minus 4y equals 14. Now you'll see if I add these two together, they eliminate. I get 7x equals 12. Divide by 7, I get 12 over 7. So I have my x, it's 12 over 7. I now need to plug in to get my y. So I'm going to plug in. Either original equation is good. I always look for how big the numbers are. I look for the negatives because negatives always mess people up. And it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to plug it in this bottom here. So I have negative 3. I'm going to plug in my x. Plus 4y equals negative 2. This is going to be negative 36 over 7 plus 4y equals negative 2. I'm going to add 36 over 7, and I get 4y equals negative 2 is really negative 14 over 7. So I'm going to get um, 22 over 7. I'm now going to multiply by the reciprocal, and I get y equals 22 over 28, which will reduce to 11 over 14. So my answer is 11 over 14 is the y. Now, um, I want to teach you tomorrow how to do store as x and store as y. It's the easiest way to check these. So this is what it's going to look like if I store x, store y. I'm going to take the 11 over 14, and I'm going to type in alpha y equals to get the numerator denominator, store, sto, which is a button down here on the bottom of your calculator, sto, as y. y is alpha 0, I think. I'm not really sure. Alpha 1. Okay, then I'm going to take 60 over 35, which really should be 12 over 7, um, and store it as x. So then I have this. Now anytime I type x or y, my calculator would plug 11 over 14 in for y and 12 over 7 in for x. Okay? 12 over 7. It did simplify for me. So I type in 5x minus 2y and I get 7. I type in negative 3x plus 4y and I get negative 2. And if you look back at the example, this is what I should, should get. So this means that I checked and my answers are correct.